All right, uh, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, so this one is going to uh, teach you how in Construct 2 uh, to or Construct 3 to create a uh, character creation system. If you're building something like an RPG, uh, you want uh, to be able to create a character with different stats and uh, abilities and skills and all that and assign different numbers and um, um, to modify those numbers uh, based on what happens over the game. So I'm just going to uh, go over how you do that. Uh, or one way of doing that. So uh, I'm just going to run my layout here and just give you a, a sense of, of what's happening. So um, I'm going to come to the screen where you can you know continue your game, options, exit, etc. But we've just got uh, create new character here. Uh, so we will fill out some some of these items. Um, we've got, I just kept it very simple, just three stats, but we could make it as uh, complex as we want, have skills, um, gender, species, all that kind of stuff, uh, but I haven't included those. Uh, I think these these three are just a, a pretty good example by themselves. So, give the character a name, and now start filling out what their stats are. And we've got an up and down button. We'll go into how those work. But uh, yeah, once you fill out the stats. Uh, you then choose your character. So this could be something like in, in your game. This could be their portrait. Uh, it doesn't have to be their actual uh, player icon, but uh, once you choose one, uh, you can then start the game. And so here's the really sort of basic, crummy uh, little game setup I have here. Um, and so there's Steve. And so Steve has different actions they can take. Uh, again, this is very, very simplified. So, um, Steve here is gonna shoot fireballs. So, there's the enemy there. Um, so, hit Z, and there we go. Fires a fireball. Second one destroyed the enemy on two hits. So, let's go into why, why that is. So, we'll go into my setup here. Um, so inside of uh, uh, the the menu system, it's pretty straightforward. It's just you know uh, on starter layout, you set your text boxes. If if you haven't um, done a tutorial yet or seen a tutorial on on setting text, you really want to do this. Uh, do that first because I'm not really going to go into that here. Um, but that then takes us to uh, our character creation screen. And before I go there, I'm going to show you uh, I've set up uh, the character stats as a bunch of global variables. Um, and I think that that helps. That's best for carrying it from uh, one layout to another. If you use instance variables, it's not going to carry over from one layout to another, and you're going to be switching from from one layout to another because uh, that's pretty standard inside of a a CRPG and inside of most games. So, um, so we'll go. There's the basic setup for the character creation, and so the event sheet for this. Um, just quickly go into the buttons. So um, you got the strength, intelligence, speed buttons. Uh, you got up and down for them. So uh, you click on the up strength button as long as there's points remaining to distribute. So that that is a global variable. Um, potentially, I could have made it an instance variable inside of that layout. But anyways, um, as long as there's points remaining, uh, you can you add one to the character strength variable and then you immediately update the text <coughs> as well as removing from that uh, that global variable for the points remaining to distribute and then if you click on the down strength button and as long as the character strength is above zero then you're going to subtract one from the character strength update the text and then add a point back to that global variable um, for point distribution and then update its um, its text box as well so, um, the same with intelligence, speed, all that kind of stuff. Once the number of points remaining are zero, and as long as um, a character appearance, actually, I have to go into why. <laughs> why the hell is that? Anyways, um, so I, that's that's the main thing. So as long as the points remaining to distribute are zero, and oh, okay, and the character appearance is no longer zero. So that's a global variable as well. Character appearance. So that means after you have chosen, after you've clicked on one of these appearances, um, then you get the option 
to go over into the next um, the next uh, sheet there if you click on the go to game button um, but yeah so once once the points equal zero as well then all of these character um, graphics become visible and you can now click on one so um, for instance you click on the first character the other three are destroyed and you set the character appearance to one and this is important because um, each one of these and this is where I can use instance variables with no problem each one of these has a different um, different attack so uh, this guy has lasers uh, she has fireballs I, I couldn't think of something for the wolf so he just has wolf vision and then uh, yeah he's spaceman blasts okay so everyone has a different attack and um, and see on this play screen here there's the the attack that they generate again really crummy kind of placeholder stuff that I just created but anyways uh, so you get into this um, you go into the event sheet screen and what you can see here is that um, uh, based on the global variable so if the global variable was set to one for character appearance then you spawn character one um, on the player collision box uh, but if character two was chosen in that earlier character creation screen then you spawn character two and you're gonna get a character that shoots fireballs shoots lasers wolf vision spaceman blasts okay um, and so get all your text boxes set so those um, show up appropriately in the bottom of the screen here you see all your character stats and you see your character's name uh, again it's not laid out very pretty but I just wanted to show the functionality of it and um, and as well I wanted to show sort of the uh, the damage that that you do so um, this is how you set the damage to be reflective of the character's attributes so um, So uh, just to go into that uh, setup a little bit, so um, essentially uh, I've just got a value of one multiplied by whatever you set the person's character intelligence at. So that's for that uh, fireball attack. Um, lasers, for whatever reason, I set it to base off the character's speed. That doesn't make sense, but uh, and then the other two I've set for uh, to to be reflective of the character's strength. So. Um, each time one of these attacks hits the uh, the enemy object, um, it subtracts that amount from the enemy's health. Once the health reaches zero or less, you destroy the object. So you destroy the enemy object. So um, essentially, so I'm going to go back, um, rerun the layout here. Oops, wrong layout. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Or, so uh, let's create um, let's create Sheila, uh, and we'll set the intelligence to twenty. Now this doesn't make sense. We're not putting in any stats for the other two. That's fine. We can play with the mechanics later. But um, uh, we'll set that character again. So again, this character uses a fireball attack, and that's based off intelligence. And the enemy character has twenty health. Let's go back just show it here so there's the enemy character there and there's their health that's the instance variable 20 health and so um, it should it should destroy the enemy now in one attack because it's going to be 1 times 20 and the enemy has 20 health so attack <laughs> it's a crummy fireball attack and enemy is destroyed uh, just to illustrate that a little bit better Let's uh, let's um, create a new character again. Uh, there's Sheila Mark Two, and um, we're gonna give zero intelligence. Put the stats in everything else. And so now, let's see all the stats down there. So now I should endlessly be able to hit that object and never destroy it because it's going to be 1 times 0 equals 0. Um, so nothing's being subtracted from the enemy health object. So 
you can sort of see that's a, a pretty illustrative example of uh, how you can have your your stats directly uh, affect the kind of character you want to build uh, inside of the game. So I hope that was uh, helpful. If any questions, leave them in the, the comments section. Uh, but I hope this is uh, some help in creating your own uh, RPG games inside of Construct 2 or 3. So thanks for watching.